Hey there, since uh, most of this has remained the same from pre 3.0 to 3.0, uh, I'm gonna be jumping back and forth between the last video and uh, whatever has changed in this video. And I'll try to make it obvious uh, whenever I do that. So um, if you see like number totals change in the on the program, don't worry too much about that. All right. so. Uh, for the introduction, we're going to jump back into the previous video's content. And uh, some things have changed since the last video, so um, here's an updated tutorial. So first of all, you're going to go to my URL, github.com slash djotaku slash el donation tracker. I'll have that in the video information at the bottom. And then what you want to do is come over here to releases. And uh, you always want to get the latest release. Here are all the different releases I've done recently. So um, I might have some information here on how you can use the latest release or any changes that have happened since last time. But what you want to do is come here to where it says Extra Life Donation Tracker for Windows. Click on that. And you can see right here that it's saving it to my computer. All right, I'm going to open that folder. Right, here it is. Uh, for ease of this tutorial, I'm going to drag it over to my desktop. And I'm going to unzip it. And I'll show the extracted files when I'm done. You don't have to do that, but just so I don't have to find it. Not that I have an extremely crazy set of icons here, but you might. So this might make it easier for you. Right, so you want to double click here into Windows Build. I'm going to shrink this. And you just want to scroll down to see GUI. Double click on GUI. Uh, so if this happens, run anyway. <laughs> All right, so this is uh, some of the stuff that has changed in 3.0. So I'm going to launch the program from scratch here um, because I just want to bring your attention to some of the stuff that comes up in the um, command line window. So I'm going to double click here, GUI. And the first thing you'll see here is that it's looking for persistent settings and it'll tell you what folder that is. Um, it'll automatically create this folder for you, so don't worry. And it's, um, where did it go? this folder here, I've taken mine out just so that It'll behave the same way it would for you the first time you uh, you pull this up. And uh, let me scroll back up here. Um, it'll also tell you the uh, that it's checking the version. That's because I, I've now I'm now versioning the file so that if I add new settings as I have in 3.0, I can let you know that the settings have changed. And in the case that it has, you'll have the option to either import um, fresh settings or It'll import what you had before, um, plus um, some defaults for new settings, and then you can kind of take a look at whatever's there, and then once you hit save, now you'll be updated to the latest version. Um, the other thing I did to try and make things a little more um, useful for you as you're using this is let it know what files it's trying to open for the text files, so that can kind of let you know, hey, did it actually pick up my settings like I thought it would? So. Um, so here's the program, and I'm going to click on um, settings. So I'm going to put this right over here. So the first thing you're going to need to do is change the participant ID to uh, your participant ID. The team ID can stay uh, completely blank if you don't have any team, or you can put the team number there. So let's let me show you where you get that from. So I'm going to go to extra life URL right here is the team I mean the um, participant ID and if I go to my team use the team ID all right so um, you fill those two things in currency symbol um, here's a new field that didn't exist before 3.0 donors to display and that is um, later I'll show you how in OBS you take the output from this program and use it to 
um, put information onto the um, OBS window. And in the past, I would limit you to five donors, either horizontally or vertically. Now it'll be whatever number you pick here. So if you have, um, if, if the number is bigger than the number of donors or donations you have, don't worry about it. Um, it won't try to do anything weird if, if um, you have only one. But let's say you have 30, 40, 50, you get lots of donations all the time, and you wanna be able to display all those people across a scroll along the bottom, then you can make this number whatever size you want. At some point, uh, you might run into limitations of how fast it can scroll, but um, that's okay, that's up to you. So the next thing you wanna do um, is first select the sound, because you're gonna still be in this same directory here, and it'll be a lot easier if you just do your sound first. So you can click there for donation. Okay, um, if you stay with the image that I've given you, which is the engineer from Team Fortress, you don't have to do anything. For some reason, for sound, you have to specifically put the directory, even though it's the same directory as the program. But for the image, you don't have to. Now, if you want to pick your own image, um, you want a PNG file with a transparent background. And um, right now, I'll jump back to the previous video so you can see um, it, how to confirm in um, Adobe Photoshop what that means and and what a transparent background looks like. About that, um, let's open it up in Photoshop. You don't have to do this. I just want to show you something. So you see how everything behind here is a checkerboard pattern. That's because this is a PNG file with a transparent background. This is going to work best um, if you want to replace this with any other image. You want something that has a transparent background. Usually that's a PNG file, not a JPEG. Um, and that's going to allow it to show up over whatever game you're playing. And I'll show you um, what that looks like in a little bit. So anyway, you can change that picture if you want, or you can use that picture. All right, so now we're back to the 3.0 video. Um, you've uh, selected your sound, you've changed your image if you want. The last thing to do is a text folder. Where are you gonna store the output files from this program, which you then use in OBS? So you can put this anywhere you want in your file system as long as you remember, so you can import it later into OBS. For the, sim for the simplicity's sake of this video, I'm just gonna put it in the same folder where our program is. So I'll just create a folder right here. This will be text and I'll select that folder. Um, so one quick thing, when you're doing it, you probably don't want to do it um, in this same place where um, the program is because every time I release a new version, you're gonna get a whole new folder of this stuff and so you probably want to put it somewhere else on your, uh, on, your des on your desktop or laptop so that you that will persist. Speaking of persistence, a new thing I've added in 3.0 is the ability to persist settings. So if you just hit save, then it'll it'll save the um, participant conf, which is right here. Now you'll always get a new one every time I release a new version. So the plus side of that is that if anything gets screwed up, if you grab a new version or you just go back and grab the same version you did, you'll be able to Put that in there and and start fresh and you'll know you're starting from a fresh um, participant but let's say you've set everything up and everything is exactly the way you want it and uh, throughout the year I'm releasing new versions with either bug fixes or new features and you want to take advantage of those new features but you don't want to lose your settings then you would click on persist settings and then you see here it put it in the right place and then it says persistent settings found so every time you change any of these settings and you want them to persist always click on persist settings if you want it to stay in this folder you hit save okay so uh, once you've done that um, you can exit from the settings you can come over here and you're going to hit run okay and now that you now that i've hit run it is now grabbing this information here. And now it's grabbing the team information here. 
So now you have all your information. So um, one more thing I want to show you before I go back to the old video, um, which uh, again, the file names will be different because I've changed the file names as part of the 3.0 to make them more accurate of the content that's in the file names. Um, but the process of putting it into OBS will be the same. The last thing I want to show you is this tracker here. So uh, I'll show you later in the uh, video how to use this within OBS. But um, essentially, uh, what, every time someone donates, this thing will pop up. And if you want to see where it is, if you're putting it into OBS and you want to see how it looks, click on you destination. And there you go. That was my last donation, which you can see here, last donation, Katie and Dan. So that pops up, it goes back, you hear the donation sound, either the default one that I put in there or whatever MP3 you wanted to play. And that's it. So uh, now we're going to go back to the old video where I show you how to put it into OBS and make use of it. Remember, the file names themselves will be different. And you'll also be able to put more than five donors or donations or team members now. But otherwise, it should be exactly the same. When you're done, uh, with your game session uh, until the next time just go ahead and hit stop that'll stop pinging the API and then you'll be able to close all, everything out and start afresh next time you go play all right back to me in the past if you were to go over here this is the folder we created in the settings file here's a whole bunch of text files and for example if I open that one up those are all the donors their name, how much they donated, and if they had a message, right? So this is the message I put. These people didn't have any messages. And now I'll show you how to use that. So let's come over to my infinite wall of OBS. <coughs> so what I'm going to do here to, in the past when I've done these videos, this infinite OBS has made it a little bit harder to see exactly what's going on. So I'm going to make use of studio mode here. And we're going to add stuff to this black screen. Although actually, rather than a black screen, let's make it, um, let's make it an orange screen. Or yellowish screen. Yeah, sure. Why not? So we'll do that. And you'll see the point of that in a minute. All right. So to this, we're going to add from those text files over there. So let's say you want to have a scrolling view of the top five, part, the top five donors. So you would go here, text, and we'll say top five donors, uh, scroll. We'll read from the file, all right? And we'll go over here, all right? We'll go to your, uh, my desktop. Build text files. All right, we wanted the uh, top. Let's see. Did I put top top five donors? Um, let's say last last five donors. All right, so there's that. So just for sake of uh, accuracy, let's call this last five donors. All right, so we've got this here. I'm gonna stretch it over to the to the end, right? Then you're gonna go to filters, add a filter, and you're going to pick scroll and do some horizontal scrolling, right? And so that's what that looks like. Um, come back over here for a second just to make it easier to read let's change the color to a dark blue and let's see here. let's make it a larger font let's make it a 72 all right there we go all right so there's that <coughs> see it's scrolling across now, let's say you want to show your top um, top team donors. So we'll 
come back over here and we'll do but this time we're not going to scroll we're just going to have a vertical list so we'll do top team donors we'll read that from the file we'll go here to top team top five participants there they are we will change the color to darker eh, purple purple's fine uh, we'll make the font huge because we want to see in this demo. All right, and I'll switch that over. You can see what that looks like. All right. All right, and so one, oh, one last thing that you're going to want to do. You're going to want to have this tracker so that when someone donates, you can thank them for donating. Uh, and this will automatically grab whichever was the last donation, as you'll see in a minute. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a window capture. We'll call this tracker. So the important thing about the window tracker is that it means before you start OBS, you need to come over here and open up tracker. So you need to launch the GUI, click on tracker so you have a tracker on the bottom then start up OBS. Otherwise, it's going to show your your um, this window instead of this window. All right, so going back over here. I'm going to do tracker. Okay. And okay, so here's the tracker here. What we want to do here is do a filter. And we want to add a chroma key. Boom, now it's gone because it's automatically expecting a green screen. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click over here where it says test alert and you're gonna see what, so just to show you what happens You got here, a donation. So here's what it's gonna look like on your screen. You got a donation. Oops, what I actually wanted to do was go there. There we go, one more time. You got a donation. So now you can see why it's important for the background of the PNG file to be transparent so that whatever's behind it still shows. Otherwise, you'll have a little square or rectangle there for the image that you pick. All right, so those are the basics. That's what you need to know. And, and this thing, let me come back to my uh, window over here. And you'll see all of these um, donations happening over here. I mean, uh, sorry, all these checks against the um, the API. If you look here, it's about every um, 30 seconds, roughly. And so every 30 seconds, if you have a new donation, you're gonna get this alert. You got a donation. It, instead of showing David Kendra and Kyra, it'll be whoever your last donation is. It should match whatever's here. Um, and that's all you need to know in order to use this software on Windows. And um, the same thing that I did here on OBS, you could do on XSplit using their um, their systems and whatever, however it is that you can show text on XSplit. And maybe I'll do a video that does that at some point. So, all right, just a few more quick things. That is back over here at my GitHub page. If you end up having any issues, something doesn't work for you, and you followed all the instructions on the video, just come up here to issues, and you can fill out an issue. These here that um, <laughs> that I filled out, these are the things that I plan to improve um, as, as time goes on, but um, there are some here that other people have opened up um, here. Someone wanted uh, team support um and here someone had an error so uh if you have any anything you want me to fix just come over there and i can try and fix it and get out a new version so that everyone can use the new working version so i hope you find that helpful and um i hope that um, it helps your extra life game day work um really well 
And if you enjoy the software, it's not a requirement, but feel free to come over here and donate to my campaign any amount. You don't have to, but you know, you can if you find it useful. Um, also, if you um, forget how to use it, I've got instructions here that, um, that you can follow. So, all right, thanks for watching. Bye.